All right, so an interesting sort of question here, geometric sequences. We've got a geometric sequence here, 36, 18, 9. It's being multiplied by one half every time. Um, and we've got dot, dot, dot. That means a bunch of space. And then term n is 9 over 16. And so the question is, find the value of n. Really what we're saying is, how many terms until we get to the term 9 on 16? So, uh, let's write down what we know. We know that the first term is equal to 36. Now, the common ratio, I, I've let the cat out of the bag, it's one half, but to figure it out, uh, you know that you can just take one term and divide it by the previous term. So the common ratio is 18 over 36, which is one half. All right, so as long as we know the first term and the common ratio, we know everything there is to know about the geometric sequence. Formula, uh, term n, is equal to uh, a times r to the n minus 1. All right, so let's start putting in what we know. We know the first term was 36. We know that r is 1 half. Now we know that term n is going to be equal to uh, 9 on 16. And we don't know what the n value is here but we have a little n minus 1 there. All right, so finished up now. We've got 36 times 1 half to the power of n minus 1 equals 9 on 16. We just need to start rearranging this and solving. So I can get rid of the 36 by dividing by 36. So 9 on 16, um, how should I write that? Divided by 36 equals 1 half n minus 1. Now, really, that's the same as uh, 9 on uh, 16 times 36. Might need a calculator for that. So that's going to be uh, 9 on 576, which is equal to 1 half n minus 1. 9 on 576 uh, simplifies to 1 on 64. Okay, uh, getting there, 1 half n minus 1. Now, that's going to be the same as um, 1 on 64 equals 1 to the n minus 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. Okay, so uh, 1 raised to the power of anything is going to be 1. Uh, so we don't really need the n minus 1 here for the 1. So we can just say that um, 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 equals 1 on 64. Now here, uh, I'll just rewrite that. 1 on 64 equals 1 on 2 to the n minus 1. We could rewrite 64 as a power of 2. That's called equating the bases, and you've done that before. Uh, 1 on, uh, now 2 to the power of 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. 2 to the power of 6 equals 1 on 2 to the power of n minus 1. Therefore, uh, if 1 on 2 to the power of 6 equals 1 on 2 to the power of n minus 1, then this must equal this. So 6 must equal n minus 1 which means that n equals 7. All right, that's a, a complicated question, and there's a few little skills in there that you need. Probably the, the most important one there is that equating bases idea. Just before I go, there is an alternative path uh, for solving this. It's probably not uh, as intuitive, I think, but you could have done it this way. So if you look at 1 over 64, you could rewrite 1 over 64 as uh, 1 over 2 to the power of 6. Uh, and that's, so that means 1 over 2 to the power of 6 equals 1 over 2 to the power of n minus 1. And then that means that 6 equals n minus 1, which means that n equals uh, 7. So it probably cuts out a couple of lines, but I think in my mind it's really hard to see that 1 over 64 is the same as 
uh, one half to the power of six. I have a, I feel like maybe this is slightly easier to deal with, but uh, there's there's two methods to get that done. 